and welcome to the X-22 Report. My name is Dave, and this is episode 247, and today's date is December 24th, 2013. And the title of this episode is America is on the Path of Becoming a Police State. And before I get started, I just want to wish those who are celebrating Christmas a very Merry Christmas. And tomorrow, December 25th, which is Wednesday, I will not be doing a report, but I will be doing a report on Thursday, December 26th. So I have the one day off of doing a report. But let's get into the economic collapse news. And what do we understand? We understand that the Eurozone, United States, Canada, Australia, the UK, Germany, all these countries are in debt one way or another. And some countries are in debt even more, and they do not have the revenue to pay for this debt. France just happens to be one of them. We see Greece, Cyprus, Italy, Spain. So what do these countries do, just like the U.S. does? They tax people. They tax land. They impose more taxes to build the revenue to pay for their debt. And right now, the France's Superior Council of Audiovisual wants to impose a tax on media giants like YouTube, Facebook, Daily Motion to force them to contribute to France. And the only problem is, is a huge obstacle which is in their way. Uh, the legislation is only applicable to websites that are based in France, so they cannot tax these companies. And the only way to do it is probably to change the law, and we'll have to see how this plays out. But again, these countries will go forward and start raising taxes, uh, which we've seen in many places. I mean, I think France has raised their taxes to 75% on the wealthy, and you will see this continually get worse as time goes on. We see this in the U.S. This is what Obamacare was meant for. This was a complete cash grab. They were supposedly going to raise about $200 billion. The government was going to take a piece of the action from all these people signing up uh, to Obamacare. And even if you didn't sign up, they were going to take the penalty, which is a tax, and they were going to use this to fund the government. But this Of course, Obamacare has been falling apart completely, and they have nowhere of the uh, enrollees they thought they were going to have, so that whole entire mess is completely falling apart. And uh, we understand also that every single country wants their goal back, because what has value in the end, the piece of paper with the ink on it, or actual gold and silver? And we understand that Germany has asked for their gold back, and the U.S. and France were holding their gold, and so far they have only returned 37 tons, and they have a total of 700 tons to return, so that's uh, 663 tons to go. And this is why the U.S. and France decided to take a trip to Africa and invade all these countries. Because guess what they have as a natural resource? Gold and other other natural resources. But Mali is one, I think, is the third largest producer of gold. That's why France is there. The United States has their military position in Italy to go right across the Mediterranean and into Africa. We see the U.S. is now in Sudan making their move, and we can see what is happening. And, of course, in Sudan, China is also in Africa, pumping in billions of dollars into the infrastructure of Africa. Kenya is the clearinghouse for the yuan, and right now China is is in Sudan. They are backing the rebels, and I believe Iran is also helping them back the rebels, and the U.S. and France are backing the government, which is kind of strange because in Syria, it's the opposite way. They're saying the rebels should have freedom. The rebels should allow, should overthrow the government. But in Sudan, where the rebels want freedom and they want to overthrow the government, the U.S. is taking the other side because the government is allowing them to come in and do whatever they want there because they're paying them off and China is supporting the rebels which wants to overthrow the government and push the US out and we see this is why this is happening in this area. Now we understand that the unemployment insurance um, is going to run out on December 28th. Uh, Obama, Congress have not signed a new bill into law stating that 
the unemployment rate, the unemployment insurance is going to be extended. So 1.3 million people are going to lose their unemployment insurance and they are going to fall off of the unemployment track and this is going to bring down the unemployment rate to something like 6.2, 6.3%, something in that range. And of course, this is the perfect number that the Fed wanted because, you know, they're data driven and uh, they are looking to do a full taper once this happens, which we know that's not what's going to happen. But President Barack Obama signed in an executive order on Monday setting federal civilian and military pay, military pay rates for 2014 and they are getting a raise of 1%. They haven't received a raise in four years, but lucky for them they have jobs. And I'm not putting down the military or anything like that, but we need to look at what is going on here. The U.S. government is sending billions of dollars over to Africa, Afghanistan, the Middle East, Israel, billions, I'm talking hundreds of billions of dollars, where that money could be used here in the States. And I believe Senator Coburn showed, and I did a report on this, of all the waste the government puts money towards, which is completely meaningless. And he came up with $30 billion. And if we look closer, if we took a magnifying, cla uh, magnifying glass and we really inspected what was going on in the government, I'm sure we would find hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars that just go out the window and can be used for the people of the United States because that's why they are in the government to support the people of the US. They serve the people. The people do not serve them. They are carrying out the wishes of the people. This is how the government was set up and I believe that Congress, the President, has completely forgotten all this and they are becoming this good old boy club out there in Washington where they're making millions upon millions of dollars and they are completely in a bubble of fantasy world and completely forgetting about the people of the US. I mean for instance just think about what Obama did. He said to all Americans, Obamacare is fantastic. The Affordable Care Act is so great. This is going to help every single person. When it first came out, he didn't even sign up for it. Actually, he never signed up for it. He didn't even use the website to sign up for it. It was symbolic. He kept his insurance plan. How great can this be for the people of the United States. It isn't. That's why he didn't go out there with all the congressmen and everyone, all the representatives, everyone out there signing up. You didn't see that. You didn't see that all on cameras showing how great it is. No. They didn't do any of that. And plus, none of our representatives here in the U.S. actually read the Affordable Care Act. They had no idea what they were passing. And to me, that is not the person I want in government supporting me. Now we understand the economy is not doing well and we are seeing, I was out in the stores uh, yesterday and today, I was out uh, d during the weekend and let me just tell you, these shelves are full. I do not see the shelves being empty because I remember when I was a kid, I went to the store, the shelves were empty. I went to a mall, people were parked on the grass, uh, you couldn't even you couldn't even get into the mall. That's how bad it was. Here, I'm seeing that they have all their all all, all the uh, uh, shelves completely full, and they're not really selling as much as they thought they were going to sell. And it is proven that this last weekend, which I've reported on before, was a disaster for retail. And they still don't want to admit that it's because people do not have disposable income. People are nervous about keeping their jobs. People are unemployed. The unemployment rate is higher than 7%. It is around 25 to 30%. People are underemployed. They do not have the same salary. So they're not going out and purchasing the same amount of gifts. And what the retail stores are doing right now, they are now 
doing really deep discounts for after Christmas. Amazon already is offering after Christmas deals of up to 70% off clothes, 60% off some electronics. Old Navy is running TV ads that its after holiday sale starts early with desk discounts up to 75% off. And we have to remember sales at U.S. stores dropped 3.1% to uh, $42.7 billion for the week that ended on Sunday compared with the same week last year. Stores had a problem even getting Americans into stores, let alone getting them to spend. The number of shoppers fell 21.2% during the week that ended on Sunday. So it is really bad out there. And what else is really bad? Well, mortgage applications down 66% from highs to a new 13-year low. And again, people do not have the money. Just thinking about all those people who foreclosed, had short sales, lost their job, have no credit. The Fed is still purchasing the toxic loans off the banks at $85 billion a month. They've been doing this for, what, four to five years right now, and they're continually doing this. And we are seeing that real estate is in a bubble. It is starting to collapse. There are cracks uh, now forming, and we see mortgage applications plunging. We see sales starting to decline. The cash buyers are starting to fade out, and they're trying to get rid of their inventories because they realize what's happening. Wells Fargo, Citibank, Chase, they are la- they've already laid off thousands of people from their mortgage departments. This happened in August, uh, August and September, and they already knew that this was falling apart. Okay, now, there has been a lot of book bannings in the U.S. schools. It is on the rise. And we saw this in Germany. And right now, an anti-censorship group in America has reported a flurry of attempted book banning in the last quarter of the year and has said there are increasing numbers of books being taken off the school shelves. National Coalition Against Censorship investigated three times the typical number of book bannings in the United States. Now, why is this all happening? Well, you have to remember that right now, the public schools are forced, if they want the money, to use Common Core. Common Core is used to dumb down the uh, American students to make them good, obedient workers, and that is it. Uh, They do not want them to think out of the box. They do not want them to understand what is really going on in the world. They are rewriting the Constitution. They're rewriting history to make them believe what is here is absolutely true. And it is a complete illusion. I've seen some of the books my children are bringing home, and everything is being rewritten. Now, the other thing that is going on right now is that... Obama is pushing programs to turn public schools over to the corporations. President Obama made a well-publicized helicopter landing in New York City's borough of Brooklyn on October 25th. And what they want to do is they want to take every public school system and start turning them over to the corporations where they will administer Common Core and teach them how to be good workers. And this goes on to say the visit by Obama and de Blasio delivered the message that education reform attacks and corporization of education would continue regardless of the change in mayors. And this is not going to stop because they are trying to create the perfect worker. And we have to understand that they do not want people to understand what the Constitution means. They do not want people to understand what central banking is. They do not want people to understand how and what money is. They want them to obey. They want them to be good workers. This is for the new world order. This whole entire system is becoming one big police state because we have to remember they passed the NDAA. They can pick you up under the president's um, orders without proof if they suspect you of being a domestic terrorist. Now, it doesn't really matter if they have proof. If they believe it, you could be picked up without due process. Same thing with the Patriot Act. You can be spied on. The NSA has proved it. They are creating social profiles, just like the Stasi's 
did in Germany. They read everyone's mail. They knew where everyone was going. The NSA is doing the same thing. They are keeping track. They are creating social profiles. They're using facial recognition. They are making sure they're following the money. They want to know what everyone is doing. Now, they're taking this one step further with the real ID system. And this real ID system, um, and this is uh, from Representative Justin Amash, and he goes on to say that, I think it's scary the direction of the government is going, regardless of whether you have a Republican president or Democratic president. We have an executive branch that is getting way too powerful, and President Obama is setting the stage for something very dangerous in the future. And they have implemented, I think back in 2005, something called Real ID, and they want all the states to come together by April of 2014. And right now they have 41 of the states that are complying. And this real ID is almost like a paperless uh, Nazi Germany. Wherever you go, you need to show your ID. So what are they trying to do? They are trying to federalize your license in every state. They want to take all of your information, put it into a main database. This is the Real ID Act Driver's License Act. They're going to take everyone's license, put it into a database, because in the future, if you want to go someplace, you will hit certain checkpoints. Like if you're leaving a state, you will, know, you will need to show your paperwork, and that will be your ID. And this ID is going to be shared domestically, and they also want to um, share this internationally. And the data must be included on the card, and what technology is in, it is encoded with will have all your information. And what information do they want? Well, they want your name, your signature, date of birth, gender, your unique identifying number, principal resident address, front-facing photograph of the applicant. And each state must agree to share its motor vehicle database with all other states. This database must, be in, must include, at a minimum, all the data printed on the state's driver's license ID. And they want to take this one step further. They want to share this information, not just between the states here, with Canada and Mexico. Because if you try to go through any area, you are going to hit a checkpoint, and you will need to show your ID. So this whole entire idea of the NDA, the Patriot Act, you're not allowed to protest if there's a gov government official around. Um, there are, are trying to get rid of the Constitution, and now you will have uh, electronic paperwork where you'll hit checkpoints to go from state to state or from county to county, however they're going to do this, because when there is martial law and everything is locked down they need all of this all these systems in place and they are doing it right now in front of our faces now there was an interesting article in um, this was the um, shitfplan.com site how easy it was for them to push a button and have the 40 million uh, charge cards completely halted and stopped and they're trying to show you how easy the system is to take down in one second by just pushing a button and you know what this attack highlights is that with the t with the right type of an event the economy and financial system of the United States can be shut down almost instantly and we have to remember in my other report I cited that they're looking for a kill switch for the stock exchange they want a kill switch and which they already have in every single phone um, this was downloaded in all the updated operating systems because they they want the ability to shut everyone down at a moment's notice and we can see what they're trying to do the same thing with the power grid the same thing with the total internet they want a complete kill switch for the internet and DHS has been uh, reported that they already have this kill switch but again they, they don't come out and tell you this just like the NSA is not really spying at all and then you find out that they're completely spying and they're not just keeping the metadata they're keeping all the phone records all the email they're putting together social profiles and we see what is happening here and um, of course Chase Bank made no announcement to their customers of the coming restrictions just days before Christmas they simply 
obtained a list of the potentially compromised cards, uploaded them into their system, and with a flick of a finger, shut down electronic access to customer funds. And um, this is how easy it is. They have complete control of everything in the country. And we understand this, and this is why they're setting up for this false flag event, because they already have control of it. All they need to do is pull the plug, and all of a sudden there's a cyber attack, blaming on another, another country, banks are on bank holiday, you can't take your money out, balance, begin. And we can see many other things happening, something like a uh, uh, chemical attack, a dirty nuke explode, an EMP over the United States. So there are so many, so many different things. We also have to remember, down the East Coast, every single year, they have the drop and hide, or whatever that's called, for the earthquake drill. They could, who knows, explode a nuke underground and uh, create some type of earthquake and uh, say it's a natural disaster and um, declare martial law because it engulfed, I don't know, five, six, seven states or whatever it is. And and we can see all this being played out right now. But again, we have to understand that the Fed has already said they're going to taper. They haven't yet. They're not going to do this until January 24th. So they say, which I believe they're not really going to do. I believe there's going to be some type of an event that will stop them. And all of a sudden, they'll say, listen, we can't go further with this because this country hit us. The market came down. They're collapsing our economy. We really need to pump this up. But what is happening now is that they are threatening and continually letting us know that there's Al-Qaeda and other organizations and other factions and other lone wolves that are out there that will attack the U.S. And they're continually doing this. And, some reason, and for some you know, um, um, uh, particular specific reasons they are doing this is because China is making moves into certain countries. For instance, there was a warning um, from a Pakistan group saying that they are going to attack the United States. Well, the same time this announcement comes out, we have to understand that China just committed $6.5 billion to Pakistan's nuclear project. And they gave they are committing this money to finance the construction of the major nuclear power project in Pakistan's port city of Karachi as it seeks to strengthen ties with its with its strategic partner China has complete confidence in Pakistan's cap capacity to run a nuclear power plant with all checks in place and at the same time this happened the Tehrik e Taliban Pakistan's most dangerous terrorist group uh, promised to attack New York City and Washington DC in a newly released video and it shows hooded fighters training with automatic weapons and pistols in isolated mountains and a promise is then made to seek revenge on America on America and other NATO countries. I urge you to think, begin jihad against NATO countries, Americans and their allies in their own cities, in their own regions. In this video, TTP said it ordered the 2010 failed bomb bombing in Times Square. It also claimed responsibility for the most deadly attack in CIA history when in 2009, seven CIA agents died in Afghanistan. And they are um, ready and willing to attack the West when they see fit. And this is, a, of course, propaganda um, to scare the American people that there's going to be some type of terrorist attack. And all, you know, we all know it's going to be a false flag event because they're building this up. And if you notice in all my reports, every time there is some type of deal down in South Africa, uh, in Pakistan, in the Middle East, there's always some type of threat or there's always some type of lockdown of the Middle East. There's some type of lockdown in Africa or evacuation of uh, citizens of the U.S. And we're seeing this over and over. I mean, for instance, Sudan. They just had an emergency evacuation because things were getting out of control. And the real reason was is because the people want free of the central banking system and they're fighting for their freedom and China is backing them. It just so happens the U.S. was fired upon, <laughs> false flag, to get us into Sudan. Because how else can they explain why we need to go into Sudan? The same thing happens in Kenya. All of a sudden, we had this terrorist attack in 
a mall. At the same time, in Kenya, China was dealing with Kenya to be the clearinghouse of the yuan. In North Korea, when the United States comes out saying they're um, creating this nuclear weapon, they can fire it upon the United States. Uh, they're going to uh, shoot one over very soon. The propaganda was hitting you know, all-time new highs of propaganda. And at the same time, they were making deals with Iran to trade oil with North Korea. North Korea was making deals with Russia to create a railroad system. And this is why the propaganda was pushed forward. Ukraine... Ukraine decided to go with Russia instead of the central bankers, which is the EU, the US, and what happened all of a sudden? Riots broke out. We want the EU. We want to be in debt like the Eurozone. We want to have double-digit employment. We can see a pattern. It is the same pattern every single time. 9-11. They wanted to get into Afghanistan. Why? Third largest copper mine. China was also going there. What else? They wanted the poppy fields to pay for their covert operations, taking those poppy fields, creating opium, and selling it to China and other nations. And they want to keep Afghanistan because it is a strategic location where Russia is and Iran. And we can see this happening in every single location. Yemen, same thing. The, the rebels were fighting for their freedom and they have drone attacks. It is happening in every single country. It happened in Lebanon, it happened in Iraq, it happened in Egypt, it happened everywhere. It is the same pattern. There is no difference right now. So what can we expect going forward? We can expect a false flag event because the U.S. government does not want to be blamed for this collapse that is coming. They're going to blame it on another country. They're going to act like they're saving us. They're going to say we need to pump these markets back up with quantitative easing. Of course, they're not going to say it in that way. They're going to say the Fed has agreed to help us out by monetizing or um, creating more money to get cash and currency flowing throughout the United States. But in the meanwhile, what they're really doing is covering up the real problem, which is the entire system is completely crumbling around them. And they are now in overdrive of printing because all of these treasury bonds, all those people who had the U.S. dollar, all that is flooding back to the United States. Foreclosures, the real estate market is, reached the the, the top of the bubble. It burst. There are tons of foreclosures, short sales, people losing jobs. And this is what they're going to make it seem like, that they are helping, but they aren't. They're just covering it up so they can start the war to cover up the entire collapse. But you have to remember, meanwhile, martial law will take effect. Constitution will be thrown out the window. They will be going around rounding up the people uh, those people who are a threat to the system and this is why they've been spying on everyone creating these social profiles and pretty soon we will have checkpoints in every area using your real ID identification card you'll be stopped you'll be asked to show it they'll scan it through make sure it's you and um, we can see how everything is becoming a police state in the US Listen, everyone, thanks a lot for listening. Be well, be safe, and especially be prepared. And have a, a Merry Christmas uh, tomorrow. Thank you.